Welcome to The Judgment Show. This is a special edition again. We're yep. North American prime time. So we're going from the 35 degree summer day in Australia to... to snow and whatever you have over there. In, so it's uh, in the US. 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday here, yep. uh, which means it's, uh, it's something like 7, 7 o'clock in LA, 10 o'clock in New York, that kind of thing. New York would be sub-zero yeah. temperatures, wouldn't yeah, it? Pretty cold. Yeah. All right, cool. So it's very hot here. Um, it's been close to 40. Beach days every day. We haven't actually done a judgment show for a while. We've done lots of other things. Yeah. Uh, podcasts and, and games, and, games and, and stuff, but we're doing a proper show today. So for those who haven't seen it before, this is what it looks like. So this is Jeff. G'day. How's it going? I'm Andrew. Uh, we are the creators and designers of Judgment, uh, and we're the guys that, yeah, run things from day to day. So we're both coming to Depticon. Yeah. Aren't we, Jeff? So today's show, we've got a special thing. We're going to talk about Depticon a fair bit, about the format, what it's involved. Uh, David has asked us about warband selection for it, so yep. he's given us three that he wants to take, we'll and we're going to talk him. about what we think we should add to it. We are also doing FAQs. We've got a bunch of FAQs that yep. we're just going to go through. Thought it'd be a good thing. When I, I will broadcast this in one piece, but I might also take the bits out and broadcast them separately, like yep. the FAQs, so people can see. So we're going to do that with some examples of how they work. Yep. Um, but the big thing, the big thing is we are revealing a new hero. So, well, his rules and illustration. Yeah. The last one we did was Ichinads, the goblin hunter who was yeah. mounted. Uh, and this time it's an undead character and it's Lord Fazil, who's also mounted. Yes. But uh -huh. we're going to talk about undead rules. So uh, most of the other races have inherent rules. Yeah. Like dwarves normally have one res, elves are normally agi five. But That's right. Not always, you know. We, we, yeah. um, but very few races have an actual rule. Even like mind horse get regeneration, That's but right. yeah. yeah. So undead have got an actual good little collection of rules that makes them a bit different to the others. Yeah, uh, mm. we're going to be the first game in the history of miniature gaming to have a balanced undead race, which is going to be good. <laughs> That's our challenge. See whether we can not make undead broken. Uh, not having psychology in our game actually helps. Every game. Well, that's normally what breaks. All the games that used to have, they've ripped the psychology sections out anyway. Yeah, they can't, yeah, because it just breaks the game. Yeah, but uh, every game, Undead's in the history of gaming seems yeah. to be too strong. Yes. Because they try to make it realistic. Yeah. So we are, win we've every, got pretty cool world. realistic rules that aren't broken. We if think. they are, we'll have to errata it. But anyway, <laughs> so Fazil's card is not version 1. It's version 0.8. Yeah. Uh, where Itchy's was version 1. Um, Fazil's, we're just going to reserve the right because just to give you an idea, Itchy's coming out first and it'll be the first quarter of this year, but Fazil's not due till the second. Yeah. So we've got a, a lot of time to sort of get him right. We are comfortable enough to reveal the rules um, and the card will go up in Vassal uh, pretty soon. People can start using him, give us feedback, it'd be fine. Yep. 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 He's, but, pretty, um, he's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> he's very, very much, I don't think, we're talking tweaks, um, yeah. but we have managed to get another... Have we said he's a, what his class is? We want to say he's an aggressor. Yeah. So we have managed to get another aggressor that is different yes. and has some really cool rules. And scary as hell. So we'll get to him eventually. Uh, but let's kick off with talking about Adepticon. Yeah, Adepticon. Um, March. So Adepticon's in March. It's in Chicago. So a couple of guys. It's 9 p.m. in Chicago right now. Got a couple of viewers from Chicago. Hello. Uh, so Chicago is Adepticon. I've been to Adepticon three times. I went last year. One time with Judgment, which was last yeah. time. I've been to other times when I was doing Rankings HQ. Um, so, awesome event, convention. I've never been to the States at all. Haven't you? No. And I've been, I've travelled a lot. Far out, right, you've travelled so a lot. I'm really excited. I'm wow. actually going to probably add a week or so. Yeah. And do some Yeah, so I've been, so, been yeah. a few, yeah, I've been a fair bit of America, actually. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. so, Chicago's going to be awesome. It's freezing cold, by the way, when you get there in March. Um, so it's uh, it's end of March, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it'd be cooler now. I mean, you, you assume it'd be going into uh... every time I've gone there, it's been absolutely freezing. Okay. Yeah, it's freezing. So I don't know what's going on. But anyway, so uh, we are both going there. We're running a tournament. Yeah. And we've got a we are sharing a booth with Muse on Minis yep. again this year. Jane, These guys yep. have been great. So a big thing about Adepticon is Muse is launching a whole new plastic token range That's for right. Judgment. They've already done the um, these things, the widgets. The widgets. But uh, I can do this. Can I? Yeah, they've already done these. And you can buy them on the Muse site now. But they're also doing a bunch of widgets. People have seen us tokens, use widgets, uh, tokens on the stream uh, before. But uh, these are ones that we sort of use just for, they're mainly available in Australia and for our streams. Yeah. But they're going to be available in, in North America. Yep. So, and there's all the heroes, including Itchy and Lord Fazil. Yep. Yeah, so there's going to be a bunch. Tokens so are relevant. They're going to be launched at Adepticon, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we're sharing a booth of Muse. I think. Next year we might get our own booth, but this year we're sharing, which is great. 
so, and we're running a tournament on the uh, second day, I think it is, the Saturday. Not sure. Whatever the second day yeah. is. Yeah. We had 16 tickets and they were sold out. Yeah, we've we got another out. eight slots so people can still buy it. And I think people are aware that we've got another eight tickets, so you yeah. should jump on. You can buy it. And it's a noob friendly tournament. We're expecting people to play with the starter set. Yeah, so you can buy the starter set on the first yeah. day. Yeah. The models come pre assembled in the starter set. Uh, we are going to have a bunch of models that people can use if they want to. It's a three versus three event. Yeah. Are we doing a pick and ban? Yeah, three versus three pick and ban. It is. So you do need five models. Yeah. We are going to be fairly relaxed with this. Um, so people will be there with other models. If they're happy for people to use them, they'll let them use them. Yeah. But you can buy them and put them together and play there. It's, so it's, it's uh, not... It's, painted is highly recommended for Adepticon. Yeah. But for this event, we're going to allow non-painted because we're, we're, we're trying to encourage Yeah, and we'll help people, people put their war bands together and yep. things like that. But it's going to be uh, yeah, three games of three versus three. Yep. So five models of pick and ban. And it's all on the cobblestone map, which yeah. is the map you get in the starter box. And yeah. if you know on the starter box, there's four different scenarios, right. maps on it. So we're going to play three of those four. Yeah, we'll have the neoprenes, but it's the same yeah. one. Yeah, same we're one. playing on neoprenes, but it'll be the same map as the one that's in the board. Yeah, so, um, yeah, for, that, that won't be the first tournament in the US, but yeah, first one that we're going to be there at. Yeah, because uh, uh, they're running one at Muse on Con as well. Uh, anyway, I'll just so, come up with the chat, Jeff. So there's eight more tickets if people want to get onto it. Um, with the maps, it's three maps. There's four maps on the on the on the map, right? We'll be using three of them. Um, we'll probably announce it about a month before what maps we're actually using. We might roll it. We might have a special Adepticon thing and roll off the, the maps in front of the stream, and people can practice on those particular maps. Yes, so, yes, yes. So, um, As in the lead up to Adepticon, yeah. um, we've got a we've got a con in Australia next week. So yeah. once that's gone, then we, that will kind of be the next thing we're focused on. Yeah. And we'll do a range of streams with the new maps yeah. once we announce what they are. And explain yeah. it all. We should talk about the con a bit so coming up pretty too. Pumped. Um, yeah. yeah, so talking about having beers with us when we're there. Uh, and one guy said it's very, hard, very, really tough task to balance undead, so it's going to be good to see. Yep. Um, so I think painting might have been mandatory for the event, but I have spoken to the organiser, so I'm pretty sure we're allowed to let people play in our event without painting. Just because it is a noob friendly yeah, yeah. within the might just have bought the yeah. models that weekend. I'm really encouraged by the fact that everyone's trying to paint. Um, we want, yeah, it, want everyone to of course, paint. Because it looks so much better. But yeah, um, if you buy the thing on the Saturday then we're gonna let you play. Yeah yeah. Yeah that's the that's So the, uh, and we'll help you if you're yeah, warbing and all that stuff. So. Yeah um, and yeah so with Chicago apparently there's a big meat place they're taking us to. Oh yeah yeah there's all you can, Brazilian yeah, I think Brazilian place Brazil, yeah. yeah. So we're hanging out we are staying with uh, a lot of the streamers at Rainer, yeah. um, Flick Yep. Uh, yeah, Soshi, so all those guys. Um, yeah. We're staying with them. I stayed with them last year. Yeah. Great bunch of people. A lot of them are painting, painting judgment miniatures, miniatures on their stream. Yeah. And the big thing is, there's a big grudge match between Flixer, who's from the UK, oh, and Rainer right. from the US. If you've been following them on their fully Twitters and Instagrams, <laughs> they're painting a full judgment set and they're going to have a grudge match. The problem is, three. Th their painting is not tabletop painting. Oh, no, no, it's amazing. And you're going to use them to play yeah. with them. Uh, I saw <laughs> Flickster's tabletop. You don't want to picture. touch them. It looked amazing. It's so like, uh, the yeah, most recent one was Flick posted his Thrommel and Rainer posted his, his uh, sticks looked amazing. I saw, the, I saw yeah. all of them, yeah. 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 And so they're going to be playing a game. They're and playing. Are they playing a pick and band or just three on three? Pick and band. Okay. Three versus three pick and ban, and I'm going to be commentating and judging it apparently. I think we have a separate dice box. Yeah. Don't want to yeah, bump the dice into the models and so that That's going to be there as well. On one, I think it's one of the nights we'll let people know. So that'd yeah. be fun. Uh, yeah. So we can commentate cool. that. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be good. So, yeah, Adepticon. So that's the tournament. So it's three, three rounds. Yep. Three versus three, but you need five models. Um, I will clarify about the painting, but I'm pretty sure we've got the go ahead, but I'll make sure of that before we get there. Byron's watching. Uh, I know, yeah. He's, 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 he's comment he's here. Yeah. You're cute too, Byron. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, we've got some Aussies here, obviously. Not work. They should be at work, but they're obviously not. It's Friday afternoon. Maybe they've knocked off early. <laughs> yeah, you are also saying several companies do build and play tournaments, so I think it's allowed in those circumstances. So that's what we're going to okay, do. Okay, that's good. But if you are a veteran of judgment, and you're, there's now a few people are going to be there, like Cheddar, uh, it's a full-on tournament. Yeah, you should bring your painted models. We yeah. are going to have a prize for best painted. Yeah. Um, best painted warband. So we'll have enough please, painting judges. Please yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, uh, and there's going to be a few judgment models in the crystal brush. Is that there? Yeah. yeah. The crystal okay. brush is a big painting event. I'm sure everyone knows. One of the what? one of them bought the Vajasha for that. Yeah, yeah. Rufus Roost. Roost. Yeah, Cheddar's right. Cheddar Cabin's wife. Yeah. I'm not sure we're supposed to say whether she's which one she picked, but anyway. I think uh, Flix is doing one as well. Okay. Uh, yep. So which is cool. That's a secret, is it? I think he's doing Hexar. Is that a secret? I don't know, really. We'll see. <laughs> I'll find out what she tells me off. Hopefully That's like me hiding my war bands and, uh, and, and yeah. army lists. Very secret. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So, so, Jeff, okay, let's go through some of the, um, the FAQs we had. 
Yeah, okay. Or on Yaku Tony's list now. Let's do that first, maybe. Tony, uh, no, David, David. David. So David sent us his list for Adapticon. The three models that he did. I'll just switch over to this camera for uh, a sec. These three models, the three monitors. Yeah, were Gendrus, which I haven't painted yet, Thorga, and, uh, and Don Raka. They're the three that he's starting with. So he's asked us what, he, what we should add. And he's also talked about he likes Marcus. Um, okay. So Jeff, just with you, if he was going to add Marcus, so basically a defender, a, a supporter, and a, an aggressor yeah. in LA. So if you did add Marcus to that. So we're talking about it, it's obviously it's three versus three, and you're going to pick and bend, so you've got to try to cover your bases. He's obviously gone light on soul gazing. I actually think Marcus is a good choice because Marcus can soul gaze because he's got a legit soul yep. gaze of four, so he needs an eight to get it. Yep. And so can Genderous, so he's got that sort of like covered. And with three versus three, it's hard to cover all bases. And he looks like he's shortchanging himself when soul gazes, that's fine. Yep. But I really think he needs another regressor. Yeah. Right? And my choice was because he's got three Minotaurs already with low res, basically, res three. I'd like one of the higher agi ones. Yep. And I, my choice would probably be Nephany. A yep. couple of reasons with this. Nephany's got the high agi, of course, which is a different thing to deal with. But there's a couple of bonuses here. Marcus can make a wall. Nephany's got innate Pathfinder. So she, she can charge over the wall and they can't get to you. But also, I like her combination with Genderous with the forest. Remember when she makes a forest, it's treacherous ground, and any push in that treacherous ground yeah. does one damage that ignores one res. Yeah. She's got dual attack. She gets two attacks every activation. Yeah. She yeah. If she's literally can, at maximum, of course, she can yeah. do six pushes. That's six extra damage on top of her normal damage. Yeah. And again, the Pathfinder is handy with her forest. So there's a little bit of a synergy the thing there. Remember, Marcus is a good combination with Generous because Generous can give anyone Pathfinder as well. That's right. So she could, she could yeah. give it to... to, to um, to Thorgar to charge over. That's the other thing, right? So really good. Good. In fact, I'd pro I'd so much decline to take Marcus over to So what I normally do, mm. when I have a set, I normally have my preferred three, yeah. inverted commas, and then yeah. I'd have the subs, yeah. or also depending on the opponent. So the probably preferred three would probably be those three, Marcus, Gendrus, Thorgar. Yep. You get double soul gaze opportunity if you need it. Aggressor, she can do it, and so can he fight. And she can give them both Pathfinder. Yeah, and the Pathfinder, yeah. the wall that worked, the combination is so really good. So you're thinking good. on that way, if you took Marcus, I think he likes And if Thorgar gets banned, it's easy, and if he goes straight in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, so the other option was, if you didn't go Marcus, okay. and you just went those three, the original ones, um, then I was suggesting the first thing I'd do is do cover for Thorgar, and then it'll either be a Zonia yeah. or a Rakir. Big DPS. Just both damage. good DPS. They're both Agility 4 as well, which is pretty handy, yep. even though it's not 5. Um, either yeah. one of those is good, so just say that you took Zonia, for example. And then with your fifth slot, you've got an option of slotting in a Soul Gazer like Cruel or Saiyan. I'd like Saiyan. For healing. I think Saiyan's better because it's a healing. I like Saiyan. Also, the Monitors don't like fire. Yep. And Chicken Leash, protect one of them protect from fire. Protect one of them from fire. Um, yep. the and, the heal, and the healing with the regen, it just stacks yeah. on. It yeah. really adds up. Yeah. And Saiyan might probably cause the ban, because she's the only Soul Gazer, but then it yeah. gives you free choice to take whatever you want. Yeah. And um, mm. these two is a flip of a coin. I think David's yeah. watching. He's watching, I think. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, it's a good start, um, but I would, the next, as I said, I, something high edgy to go along yeah, with Yeah, he was three. thinking about saying, he said. Um, so, yeah, he, um, yeah. yeah, so saying, I think, because the regeneration is crazy good, yeah. and if you can, with her also giving them one or two health whenever she as activates, well. yeah. it's just massive in terms of getting getting uh, healing going. Yeah. Holy Shield's great against stopping them against getting on fire, yeah. or poison, That's which right. is amazing. So, because both, Thorgar is a, is, a pretty good candidate for Rakir blowing yeah. him up, as well as yeah. because they're low, they're low agility. That's right. Um, so you've got to look at the some maps, it's easy to get fate, for example, yeah. when you have multiple shrines. Yeah. It's, so look at that as well, because Thorgar and Donnie, they can run pretty good without fate at all. Yeah. She wants fate, you want to make the forest. Yeah. Zonya and Rakir both sort of like want fate as well, so you really have to judge. Yeah. It's not just a you know, clean, that's my three. Yeah. If there's a lot of fate, maybe you put in Zonya instead of Thorgar yeah. or Rakir, because they can use their fate every turn yeah. to blow things up. So I think, so. Dave, if you're thinking about saying anyway, I think she's a great great one with the Lion Tours. He's thinking about it already, is he? Yeah. yeah, that's for the sure. The healing yeah. and the <coughs> Holy Shield yeah. is amazing with her. Yeah. So, should be a good choice. Um, yeah, so that's, that's about it. So, give you a bit of an idea, we talk about Warband Theory a lot, there's 28 heroes, so there's a lot of options that you can go with. Yeah. And of course, you've got all the different maps. But yeah, I think, yeah, with with Jandrus, 
Remembering the fact that she can give people a path on is really good. Yeah. Um, because it's a b good bonus if you do take marks. So if you took, the, if you did take those ones and saying you probably are lacking damage if they they'd be in they Thorgar. Thorga. Yeah, you, that, that's the problem there. So if you do are going to take Saiyan, you need to take another aggressor. Yep. Yep. And I think either one of those is fine. You could try to do Piper. She's got three inch reach. Could work. But yeah, something to think about. All right. Cool. Hope that helped, Dave. Thanks yep. for the question. Um, uh, Cool. Yeah, he likes Dot Torgar and Dunham because they don't need much fate. That's right. Which is true. Yeah. All right, yeah. so we are now going, I uh, helped a lot, thanks, that's good. Um, so we are going to now talk about FAQs. So we had some people asking us, so what, anytime you've got any questions, just fire away. You can get us in either Discord or Facebook or any of those ones. Um, these questions were sent to me actually via email, contact at judgment.game. So line of sight, the pop, not the problem, Thing is, a lot of people come to judgment from other games, and so things are always slightly different. Every game's different, yeah, slightly with terrain yeah. and forests and whatnot. So, so we're going to go through a couple of the big ones now, uh, fairly quickly, and then we'll get on to Fazil. Yeah. So the main thing to think about is, with line of sight, the basic premise of judgment is that models don't block line of sight to each other. So if I have Marcus in the middle... You mean one model doesn't? Yeah, one model doesn't. If I have Marcus in the middle, and he's trying to see Thorgar, it doesn't matter where Marcus goes, he can always see Thorgar. Mathematically, you should be able to draw a line. Yeah. That's the and same. That's how we play it. That's the same as in a war machine as well. Yeah. I mean, right. you can, you, one model can't block it when there's nothing else around. Yeah, that's right. You can. Yeah. So that's the first thing. That's when they're the same size. Obviously, when Victor's in. Yeah, it Victor's a whole different thing, right? It's Victor's a hardly blocks line of sight ever, yeah. basically. Yeah. Now, if but, you had. Sorry? But yep. of course, if it's two models, you can. Yeah, right? two models together like that. Of course, it blocks. That will block line of sight. Yeah. So remember, it's any part of your base needs to draw a line to theirs yeah. without cutting over another model of the same height or, or a terrain feature. Yeah. So, for example, if we had this, uh, these barrels and they yeah. were the same height, that would block line of sight between Thorgar and, uh, yep. and, um, and Don Raka. Our objectives and shrines are all that height too. They are. So they yes. all block. They're all height too. Yep. So they're all, all, and the effigies are height four. The, the, so they're basically the same size height as the, as the heroes. Yes, that's right. right. So right. let's just drag this forest in. Now, line of sight here. Yeah. So in this case here, because only partial his base is covered by the forest, there's full, full line of sight there. Yeah, that's right. The forest, so when you're, when you're behind an obstruction or obstacle, if you're within one inch, if Thorgar's within one inch, he'll get cover, yes. right? But, but forests don't afford you. You have to that. be touching the forest. You have to be in the forest to do it. That's the, yeah. that's the main difference, right? So if it's obstruction, you need to be within one inch to get cover. Yeah. If it's, and cover is any, any line goes over the obstruction between the two models that you've effectively got and cover. And he's within an inch. So even if it's just like this and he's within an inch, Thorgar gets cover. Let's talk about cover for a second now. That's yep. hard cover. Yep. Hard cover. Um, it's minus one dice when, you, when you're melee. Yep. It's minus one dice when you're casting a spell. Magic. Which means the star is magic. So either MAG, right. ability, or the mel. mel, mel. It's minus yep. one dice. Yep. But if it's RNG, uh, RNG it's two minus two it's dice. It's minus two. So Alan D, yeah. Laura Bella. So just uh, to clarify combat, if they're fighting like this, and any part of Zonaraka's base cuts across there, they've got cover to each other when they're hitting. So it's and because it's melee, you lose one dice. That's right. Because they're both within an inch, though. Yeah, yeah. both within an inch. Yeah. Yeah. Now, with forest, obviously, that doesn't happen. doesn't matter. No. If one of them's in the forest, if you're fighting, it doesn't matter. No. All forest effect is RNG attacks. It doesn't affect magic. Magic or, that? or melee. So yeah. a star would ignore that, yeah. but an Alan Deer wouldn't. That's right. And so it's the soft dice. cover, so it's, it's minus a dice for the ranged guys. I just want to show a thing, because it's one of our maps on the, on the cobblestone map. We have yep. got the scenario where there's a shrine, and it actually overlaps yep. the forest. So you literally, that's that blocking. a lot of sight. Yeah, of sight. it does. Okay. Yep. So now, the thing about the forest, which is, which is different. I know a lot of you have got a war machine background. This is different. Um, you only got a three inch visual in War Machine. But in this, our game, if you're just clipping it, I can see. Yeah, there's no right. four inch three like inch, in War Machine, machine whatever it is. You yeah. can see any distance. So the minute you're clipping it, you can see all the way through. Here, and they can, they can, see, they can you. see each other. Yes. Right? Obviously, he is getting cover from, from RNG from shooting, over yeah. there. Yep. But there's no yep. minimum sight or anything like that, either, right? Yep. As long as you can draw a line so to that's them. So. line of sight, if you've got any questions around that. Big shout out to Jerick, who's just subscribed to us with Twitch Prime. Thanks, Jerry. Appreciate that, mate. Jerry's been That's spreading the word too. That guy is yep. just demoing yep. non-stop. He's been good. Demo king. So, other question, Jeff. FAQ was ganging up. Uh, right. So, okay. ganging up means when you've got uh, other friends helping you fight. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. So, Thorgar's here. Just say Don Rakas wants to fight him. And Marcus is Don Rakas' ally. 
So for every ally Don Rock has got who has his target in their melee range, he gets an extra dice. That's right. Yep. Yeah. And similarly, for every friend of Thorgar, just yeah. say our big mate here, Kogan, if he's distracting the minus attacker, it's minus a dice. And obviously they can cancel and, and each other yeah. out. You can have Marcus helping and him yeah. distracting, it just plus one, minus and one. And it's all cumulative, right? So if you have three guys yeah. fighting your, your target, you get three dice. So one thing about the dice, people still doing it slightly wrong, there is an order in the rule book. Yep. You have to follow that order. Don't add them all and then do the big negative. Yep. The first thing you do is compare your, just say he's using his Mel ability, v r compare that to their Agi, and then from there, if it's, if it's zero, you start at one. one? Yeah. Because it can right. sometimes be zero. You start yeah. at one, yep. and then from there you start adding all the positive things, yep. and then take away all the negatives. At the end. Right. And right. it's in the rule book actually how to do it. Yeah. It is important. It you, makes a difference sometimes. You can get different results. For yeah, example, you if you're Agi 5 versus Mel 5, Yep. You don't start on zero dice. You do start on one. one. Like, like if yeah. Bastion's attacking one of the elves, for example, That's right? right? Yep. So you have to do that. And doesn't matter how many negatives you have, you always get a dice. Yeah. So, so, so even if you're crowded out by five guys, you're fighting yep. a guy and he's yep. higher agi, you get one dice. Yep. Yeah. And a magic item who that affects the agi or the mel, that's, that's when initially. you initially straight away. Yep. If she's mel uh, agi six, mel agi six, okay? Still one dice. Still one that's dice. where you get diminishing returns. So. If you've got Sky who starts at AG6 and you yeah. buy him the AG item, yeah. pretty much not that great. If anybody else charges that, anyway. they're going to get three regardless. Yeah, that's right. If they're Mel 5 and Mel. You get one base yeah. regardless and you add two for charging. So you almost yeah. always get three, then you'll take away the distractions, but yeah. yeah. Or cover or cover. things like yeah. that. Okay, cool. um, um, yeah. Uh, right, so okay, so we've got that. Um, well, I don't think this is a fact there about it, but I want to talk about this because I've seen a few people doing this about being engaged and not engaged. Yeah. So again, different to other games. You can't, there's no minimum charge. You can charge a millimeter, it still counts as a charge, right? If you're engaging them, you can't charge them. Yep. If they're engaging you, you can't charge them either. Yep, so right. How this, as so for Rakir's got one inch range. Rakir's got one inch, so has yeah. Neff. Neff's got one inch, right? Yep. Now, if Fulgar is within two, yep. she's a bit screwed here, because yeah. she can't fight him and she can't charge him. Basically, has just to, to waste the action to walk in. Yeah. And Thulgar can just start chopping away. So yeah. you can't charge if you're being engaged or engaging that, that model. But you can, of course, charge you know, somebody else like Kogan. That's not stopping you doing that. Yeah. She just can't charge Thulgar. Yeah. So okay. now we're going to talk about shooting. So all those things we talked about, it's pretty much almost opposite for shooting. Just say Kogan wants to shoot Thulgar. Yep. I'll just go back to this camera again. So Kogan's going to shoot Korgar, Thulgar, right? Uh, now, if... Marcus is an ally of Kogan, and he's fighting Thorgar. For each of your allies that are engaging him, you lose a dice. That's right. So when you're fighting him in combat, you gain. If you're shooting, you lose. That's right. Because it's the opposite of where I'm off. The chance the you might hit your own friend. Yeah, that's right. So for each of your friend fighting the target, you lose a dice. That's also a monster as well. Yeah, same. Right. Yep. So if, if a monster's fighting Thorgar, he still gets the penalty because it's harder to hit Thorgar because he's another... It's, another guy there. It's a swirling melee, of course. Yeah. Uh, All right. And, and it's accumulative for every... Person Correct. that's engaging. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's that one there. Um, we're now going to talk about. Can I just clear, clarify yeah. this a bit more too? Because say, even if he's knocked down, I've got to clarify this. Just say um, he's shooting him. So Kogan shooting Thorgar. Marcus is knocked down, yeah. but he's he's not engaging him. But Thorgar is still engaging. It still, so still is a minus one. Okay. Yeah. He, in yeah. our game, in our game. Um, Models that are knocked down are not helpless. Yeah. They're still fighting. He's not in, Marcus isn't engaging him, no. but he's still being engaged, yeah. and that still is a penalty. Still a penalty. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, uh, cool. We've got a question here about... Uh, oh, people have been answering already. Uh, Zyvira. Um, any of all the suggestions that Zyvira shines in? Oh, yeah. It's just starting out, she seems complex. She is fairly complex. A lot of people have already answered it. Jeff, what do you think? Zyvira. Straight up, my first thought that comes to mind is someone like Skull. Uh, or Donnie. She likes tanks yep. with a lot of, lot lot of health, of health yeah. so she can you know, cut them and, and then uh, use that to heal on, and do and her ability. And Skull also does the bulwark as well, so yeah. when she cuts with bulwark it, it, it comes off the bulwark health as well. That's right. So um, that's a good one. She likes the healing ones, anybody who can heal. I made a warband of her and uh, the Sky even because a lot of, they like uh, taking damage and spreading it out. And then the rest of the heroes were either Minotaurs that regen themselves or guys like Haxar. Haxar's healing idol. Yeah. You Saiyan. drop it behind your lines, which yeah. she is. It's unreal. So you want somebody that can heal yep. to make and then get full advantage yep. of her cutting. You've got Lori Bella as well. She heals yeah. Minotaurs Laura three Bella. for everyone around, Minotaurs That's right. and Dwarves. That's right. Like you've got some really good options there. Um, so um, I think people have been sort of giving him a... That's yeah. right. I mean, all the Soul Gazers, the main thing is the Soul Gaze. 
But these yeah. extra things, obviously, if you can use them, it really helps. To, like, like Svetlana controls the monster, saying can heal. Uh, yeah. W. Like, Kong yeah. said the same thing about Laurie Bella, um, the AOE heal. Uh, I, like, if you've got a dwarf monitor heavy warband with Laurie Bella. And she's a monitor she's already. A beast. So, yeah. yeah. One action, and she does three, three health. And she works with all of monitors because they regen anyway. Yeah, that's right. And she yeah. wants to cut. Yeah. Right, so. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. That was that. That was good for. Hopefully, I helped you with your Zyvira question. Um, parting blows. Now, this is an interesting one because it gets can get a little bit technical. So we're just going to flip over here and I'll explain this. So basically, very simply, if Mar Marcus is fighting Thorgar, Thorgar decides to charge someone else or just leave his melee range, he gets a parting blow. Yep. With the parting blow, you work out the dice pool exactly like normal and you add one. Yep. So, for example, if there's things like cover in the way and he's going this way, he still will get cover for the parting blow. Yep. Um, if there's friends fighting him as well, he'll, he'll do it. Now, at the time he leaves the melee range, the instant he leaves, it's at that instant is where you calculate the dice. Yeah. So it's possible at that time he's in the range of a friend. He, like here, he's not in range of Korgar. Yeah. But if he leaves, and when he leaves Mark, as he happens to be in range of of, of Kogan, yeah. he will actually yeah. get an extra dice. He, he could he could make him get cover by yeah. leaving in a certain direction. It's up to <laughs> That's you, right. Of course, uh, and the no matter what happens, you only the only comment whenever you can do when you're doing a a parting blow is triple J knockdown. Yeah, you can't do the poison no. toxin or, no. or anything like. Literally triple J knockdown, and it will just damage. Played right? a game yesterday. My thromber got triple J knockdown on a parting blow on three dice, and he's level two coming knockdown. I was so, <laughs> so he continues on so like going. going. <laughs> uh, if you do get knocked down, you're knocked down just at that. You still are in their melee range. Yeah. at the edge of it. That, that's yeah. that's the parting blow. Now, Slide, the, it? yeah, it is. Yes, just say these three guys engaging Thorgar, and he wants to teleport back to his base. That's three parting blows. Um, the person controlling these three can decide which one, yep. in what Sorry, order yep. they do it. Yeah, that's right. right. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah and that, right. it makes a play because you might want to get the soul by somebody yep. or whatever. So. so this is a good one because a good segue into the next thing that was asked, which is placing and pushing. Yep. So if you push yourself out of combat with people, there's yep. no parting blow because you've pushed yourself out. Or push them away. Or you well. push them away. Yep. Yep. So that's one way. Often if you want to get away, you could try to push your way out and then port back to your effigy. That's yeah. something you could do. So that's a good example because Don Raka, when he gets his stone grasp, you can't advance. Yeah, but, but you, you can, can push your way out. Don Raka and push yourself out. That's right. Then you're free. Then you're free. Can do do that. what you want. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So you can even push your way out at one attack and then charge someone else in another direction, which is something really cool. That's right. Now the thing where this is completely different is with places. Yeah. So when when, it, when a thing says place, so example, Cavado's uh, placing a enemy model with telekinesis. Yep. Um, yeah, so if he does that, then you can't trigger parting blows doing that. That's right. So if, for example, if, if Gavardo was fighting against Kogan and wanted to place him away from a friend like Thorgar, Thorgar can't hit him on the way out. That's right. Because he's placing him away. That's right. Um, the other thing is sticks, uh, where sticks can, he can be there and bring yeah. a friend in base to base. Yeah. So, for example, if you say Kogan's in trouble fighting all these guys and sticks is out here somewhere, let me get him on the screen, sticks is here. He can, he can astral split Kogan out of that combat and there'd be no, no parting blows. That's right. Because it's a place. Same for Rakir with his Shadow Orb. Shadow Orb is the Basically, same. Basically, the only place that does do parting blows is when Effigy Recall. Effigy Recall. And that's when specific you're recalling, for Because literally, you're sitting there concentrating, getting back, back to your base, and that's specific rule. You're, yeah. going, you're, you're escaping, they're having an attack. That's yeah, the that's only right. real place where you do will get a parting blow. Yeah. yeah. Um, every other place, you, you won't. Cool. Yeah. So that's... Uh, Place a push. Uh, type two carry said these are the models I like. Excited to take it for a spin. This is the Zyvira question. So that was good. Yeah. All right, cool. Almost finished FAQs. Uh, that's it actually. Yeah, that's it. So that's. Um, well, hopefully we've explained stuff enough for you. Um, the game is pretty self-explanatory, but there are a lot of variables of all the different heroes. Yeah, and so the monsters throw a few curveballs in there as yeah. well sometimes. Yeah. So remember that the key thing of monsters is they're enemy to everyone, right? Yeah. So that's one thing to remember. They're enemies to both sides. Yeah. So it can often clarify things when you think about it that way. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And most, well, the abilities on the cards will say enemy model or enemy hero model. Yeah. Obviously, a monster's not a hero. That's right. But if it's an enemy, the monster counts the as an enemy. Counts. Yeah, that's right. right. Cool. Um, uh, and monsters ignore all the ganging up and distractions. Yep. All they, all, they don't get distracted. It's basically just raw. The only thing that they affects the monsters is cover. Yep. So they're fighting you over a wall, you get the bonus. And the monsters do parting blows as well. They do parting blows. But yep. you can't distract them, you can't gang, they can't gang, there's two yeah. monsters on you, they, they don't, don't, don't help each other. No, they, it's they just don't, all, yeah, they that's don't the care. So. All right, um, cool. We're almost at the Lord Fazil stage, I think. Um, you got a good turnout? Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, we've been, uh, it's, this is one of our highest turnouts, which is great. Um, 
Excellent. All right. So let's do it, Jeff. So Lord Fazil. All right. Uh, now, whenever we're introducing a new race, it's super exciting because we've got to decide what they look like, what, what do the races yeah. look like. We've also got to talk about the, the background, background yeah. of how the race comes about. We haven't released the background for Undead yet, and people might be asking why, because for those who know, our heroes are mortals that have been transported to the Shadow Plane temporarily, yeah. and when they're finished fighting, they get transported back. A bit like D&D, we have the ethereal cord that's yeah. that tips you there. So your body stays on the prim material plane, but your projection goes on the Shadow Plane, and that's what they're fighting. A couple so, of the, uh, the, the fluff pieces about the heroes actually yeah, Zaffins. Yeah, uh, I think Saiyan. They explain all that. They explain it. Yeah, they they're getting they're getting astral. Yep. If you go to our website on the origin section, you'll find it all there. Yeah. Colin and I have also talked about it on the podcast, yeah. and uh, there's also a video on YouTube where we've talked about the origins. Yeah. So undead, just quickly without going into too much detail, <coughs> they are actually powerful, powerful people who have died, yeah. and so when their soul goes to the shadow plane, their actual projection goes with them. Yeah. So these are different. They're not actually mortals that have been transported. Yeah. These are inhabitants of the shadow plane yeah. that effectively, individually, because they're all powerful heroes, have made deals with the demigods to let them be summoned to fight for them right. um, to get the souls. Because yeah. so, Undead are all about souls collection as well. Yeah. So that's what it is. So the first one is a very powerful knight who, ha who was slain. His name is Lord Fazil. So right now, I'm just gonna put The station first. Uh, Here the it is, the reveal. Uh, this is a uh, question. Sorry, before we do it, sorry. Hey. Uh, I've got a question about Don Raka. When his inability is triggered, do you resolve the dice pool against the initial target? Yes, yes. He's talking about the, the when he takes the yes, hit. Yes. So what you do, okay. it, yeah. you, you do everything against the initial target completely. Yep. You roll the dice completely. The damage, the damage and effects then go to Don Raka. That's right. So if the original target has got res, you'll take that res off the damage first. It's whatever damage, that's right, isn't it? Correct? Five damage. Yes. Can you check? No, no, the res doesn't because Don's res comes into play. Oh, that's right. Sorry, you're right. It's before the res. You just roll the, you roll the dice. It's basically against your agility. That's right. Yeah, it is. It's your agility. So you do the dice pull completely against this person you're attacking. Yep. You roll the dice. And you then work out the damage. So if it's a crit, yeah. it's five. Yeah. And it will go to Don Raka. Otherwise, you're applying that's res right. twice. So you get yeah. res twice. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so basically, if you're attacking Nephany, yep. it'll be like one or two dice. Yep. And it's two damage. Go straight to Don. He ignores, he normally it, ignores it. If he's got his res he's, three, you ignore he, it. Yeah, that's right. So that's a good question. Thank you. But even you can you can you can poison the effects can go into Don as well. He yeah. takes everything basically. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, damage and effects. So if it's a fire, if a star or hits someone and, someone and does fire. the two symbols, yeah. As long as it damages Don Raka, the fire goes he'll get through. fire as well. That's right. So it's damage and even knockdown. But if he's got stone form, he can't be knocked down. But yeah, yeah, yeah that's. Basically. He can. He's built to take it. If normally he'd be in stone form, he'd be res three and can't be knocked down. It's brilliant, yeah. yeah. And push. So that's yeah. that's main of his main one of his main jobs. Yep. <laughs> the Don is a tank. He just. He's, All right. Yeah. Uh, here we go. So Fazil illustration is up on the screen now. So, uh, yeah. So basically, um, Fazil is a death knight. Um, so we chose to go with flesh. He's a powerful enough hero to keep his flesh solid. It's slightly decaying. But he's but decaying, his yeah. horse is decaying. It is a nightmare um, with um, flaming mane and tail and hooves. Yeah. Uh, and Fazil himself has still got, you can see what he's so like. So remember, this is a, we're talking a big scale, right? We're talking this judgment scale. This is 54 scale. mil scale <laughs> judgment. So this is the... Uh, it's bigger than, probably bulkier than Don Raka, I'd say. So we've got our first So Arthurst call. That's great. Um, what is it? Uh, so Arthurst. <laughs> Arthurst is... Um, the big death knight from World of Warcraft. Okay. Uh, from Warcraft 3 and World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah he is. He's amazing. Um, so, I love him. So dreamy. That's good. Everyone seems to like him. Uh, take my money. Awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, he's going to be an amazing model. Um, we're not sure who the sculpt is going to be. Itchy Nads was sculpted by James W. Kane, who did a lot of our range. Yeah. Um, this one, we're not sure. It'll probably either be James or Tom. We'll wait and see. Uh, yeah, we really like him. He's amazing. He's going to be quite a big size. So he's human size. So if you imagine, imagine like a bastion. Um, he's not a big man. He's not a big guy. Yeah. yeah. So he's like a bastion on a horse. And the horse, you can look at it there. It's probably similar size to Thorgar. So if you imagine Bastion riding Thorgar, <laughs> that's the size of the model we're talking about. And uh, the armor is really intricate. Yeah. I really, yeah. The, the painters are going to love it. Uh, now, whenever we. Um, Whenever we uh, think about 
look, we've got to think about the cuts as well. We're not sure how that's going to work at this point yeah. in time. But we always try to make the cuts as minimal as possible. And obviously not everything can translate. I mean, the flames are going to be on the horse, but they're not going to be as wispy as here. It's up to you to paint them that way, I guess. That's right. That's always hard um, to the illustrations. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's going to come up with a scenic base. The scenic base will probably be similar to what it is with death uh, skeletons and stuff like that on the floor. Yeah. But that's him. So, got a fairly good reaction. Um, yeah, cool. I'm glad you like them. So, he's coming out. Uh, his sculpting hasn't started. Obviously, the illustration has just come out. We'll go to the sculptors now. Ichinad sculpt is almost finished. Yeah. So we'll probably be doing that either next week or the week after. Well, two calf models. We're gonna, yeah, but two calf models in the first half of the year. So we're now going to talk about his rules. Um, has it been tricky to keep it on a 50 mil? Yeah, we kind of... The trickiest ones were the Minotaurs, to be honest. Um, and they tended to go, okay, this is what, what the thinking is. Um, 50 mil bases are probably a bit big for humans in our game, but yeah. we put them on 50 mils to keep it consistent, and that's what, that's what we wanted to do. 50 mil works for Minotaur's just. <coughs> I think Don Raka is, you know, is, yeah. is a bit wider than 50 mil almost all around. And Skull's massive too. But yeah, with this, I guess you could see he's on his hind legs, because we, we don't have facing in our game, um, so it doesn't matter which way they're facing. You can just turn the model around for it to fit yeah. in places, um, so we're not too worried about overhang. We don't want to go crazy, but the reason why he's on his hind legs is primarily for that. Um, and with, I think, you remember Itchy, I think three of the legs are down, one's up in the air. So the one up in the air will be off the base, that's but that's right. basically it. Yeah. We did contemplate base of size. We did some a lot of play testing with bigger bases, 55 mil and 60 mil. We just felt it was getting a bit big and we didn't want to do that yet. It's something we might look at if we come later on to other things that are in the universe. Yeah. But we wanted to keep all our cavalry on 50mm as well. That's right. Yeah, so that's him. Um, if we want to start proxying him. Uh, so we're going to release the card. So we'll do the card So this now. is point 0.8, right? Yes. So this so is... Uh, what we'll do with the card is the, we'll talk about undead rules first. Yeah. But you're going to see everything at once. So you're going to go nuts. But we'll just... We'll do it anyway. He's pretty scary. So... <laughs> are you ready for the Vazil card? Here it comes. <laughs> Boom. Is, uh, is uh, Justin watching? Because he'd be... Uh, I don't know who he is. He's so. got five cards, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> At other Spencer, yeah, big bases on three versus three, uh, yeah, pretty. Now, problem with Jeff and I at the moment is I haven't got the card in front of us. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> let me, okay, that was a fail. Let me just bring it up now. Uh, how can I do this? Uh, give me a sec, Jeff. All right, I can get it here, I think. Oh, on your phone, that'd be good, Jeff. So, first thing about Undead. So, okay, he's mounted, just like uh, Itchy is. So with the mounted models, you get plus one uh, dice when you charge, and you also get um, plus one damage when you charge. So they're the two things he inherits for being mounted. That's the first thing he gets. The second thing is being undead. So undead, a soulless, undead a soulless, um, and which is a pretty, which is a negative and a positive, and they're also always cursed. Now, it's a cursed condition that you can't remove. Yeah. That means undead cannot um, contest, contest shrines, shrines and they can't uh, harvest souls. And they also don't add to the uh, soul harvesting ability. That's correct, because they're soulless. So all the soulless, sorry, they're cursed. All the cursed rules. I can't get it. Get it's fine. We don't need it. Um, all the cursed rules um, apply to undead models all the time. Also means. Uh, Nephany can chop them up quickly. Yep, he's automatically cursed. Yeah. So for Nephany, <laughs> yeah. uh, he gets it automatically. For, for um, Victor, That's when right. he's shooting cursed models, That's he automatically right. gets plus one extra damage. Yeah. Undead are also flammable. They get plus one damage versus the, from the fire condition. That's four damage. Just to it? clarify, this is not any deal for Stariel's basic attack. It's just the fire condition. That's right. They get extra damage from that. So, from, yeah. so there's a couple of negatives there. Solus is actually a negative as well. So what that means is when an undead model kills a model, they don't harvest the soul. The soul goes to the nearest friendly model. That's right. Um, that's not cursed. Yeah. They'll, they'll collect it. When an undead model is killed, the opponent gets an automatically banked soul. Because yeah. they don't actually give up a soul, it just weakens the effigy. So yeah. it counts as a banked soul. Yeah. So there's a couple of negatives there and positives for undead um, that we think even out. Yeah. Um, and the other thing they get is the consumed soul which is every, so every undead model will have one action, consume a soul. That's right. This is an unbad soul on the board, they'll consume it. In Fazil's case, he heals five health. That's right. But we put it in italics because for other undead heroes, they'll get other benefits from their consumed right. soul. Yeah. So the basic ability to consume soul, but different undead will get different things. It's not capturing the soul, yeah. it's just basically destroying the soul. 
That's right. So it's denying the opponent from getting correct. a soul. That's correct. Right. He's consuming um, it. He's consuming it. So and, it's he's healing, it's and he's healing five. So right. Undead immediately going to be good anti soul gazing list yep. because they're going to be able to consume the soul, spend an action, and it's gone. It's not a skill yep. check to get rid of it, which is quite cool. Yeah. Um, so they're the basic rules. Because he's mounted on Undead, he gets a lot of base rules that he comes with it. Yeah. Um, but, oh, and they also got Drain Life, that's the last thing they get, which is Leech One. Leech One. So Undead have got a fair amount of rules that come out of the box. Yeah. We've said at the top of the thing we want to make sure they're balanced. We believe that the soulless thing, being cursed, is a big negative. We believe that the soulless thing is a big negative. When, when you get killed and you... Automatically bank soul. That's a massive negative. It's massive. That's a big hit. Yep, you can send a weak character up to blow them up, yeah. knowing if the character dies, you're not going to lose that soul. Yeah, the soul's So it's back quite to... cool. But, yeah. um... But, but there are positives as well. That's why. <laughs> so we think it's kind of it kind of evened itself out. Yeah. Now, in Fazil's case, he's an aggressor, Jeff. He's a he's a uh, got 16 yeah. health at base. A mil seven because he's an yep. aggressor. Yep. Um, he's basic damage from his sword. It's a two inch reach sword. We can do this. You want to get my it's, my phone? It's two. And I, I can bring it up for you. Two three five. Yep. Uh, yeah, two three five standard aggressor, melee seven. He's got agi three. Um, Don't forget he's 235, but it's plus one damage on the charge because he's right. Cav. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. Um, All right, so let's have a look. I'll just, I'll just bring him up for you. But I'll go for his, uh, his first rule if you'd like. Yep. He's 16 health, so he's a bit fragile. The big thing about him is only Agi 3 as well. Um, so Agi 3 with 16 health doesn't sound too great, but he's got a few things that will keep him alive. Um, which we'll talk about when we get Well, he's got Leech for starters, because he's a uh, undead model. Well, he's got Leech 1 for starters, yeah, yep. because he's yep. undead. So yep. basically, Leech, Leech, Leech is every time he, he inflicts a damage, he gets yep. one uh, one health um, healed. That's right, yep. Right. yep. Um, of course. Now, yeah, okay. He's so, also got uh, combat manoeuvres. He's got two pretty good ones. One's massive and one's okay. The first one's weakened. Two symbols for a weakened, Jeff. What's that one? Okay. Any model damaged by Blightbringer, that's his sword, of course, suffers the poison or curse condition. You choose. choose. Um, yep. So it basically can, you know, it think it can turn out with Rakir or in you know, a poison or curse. So quite a good ability. Um, it's just a 2S ability, just damage him and you can choose which one. And this also tees up with his active ability, which we'll see later on. Um, so but the big one. The big one is decapitation <laughs> is two J's. Everyone's talking about it already. <laughs> it is doubling the entire damage. If he charges in, he gets plus one damage, it's six damage. He'll double it to 12. So he can kill Victor on a charge, one hit, one shot. And the, and the monsters. Now the thing is to remember this, it's, it's double uh, the damage inflicted. For, for, for judgment, damage is damage you actually mark off the card, yes. which means it comes after res. So yeah. if he does, for example, four damage to Thrommel, it would be two damage. Double to four. Within double to four. Yeah, right? that's right. Um, so, but yeah, but it can be massive. when He can be charged in, do a six damage, yeah. do 12 do damage, damage to an elf. Yeah. Um, double J, it's as scary as hell. Um, and it's exciting as well. Yeah. So everyone's going a bit nuts about this. I'll just read a couple of the comments. Uh, Decap play out the charge. Yes, we just explained that. Yeah. Um, Solus is cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, great sculpt, thank you. The so decap is his thing. That, that for me, he's got a lot of cool abilities you're going to see. You can yeah. see him already. But decap, really, uh, yeah. it's him. It's, it's his him. signature. It's like your point. is the throw. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. This guy is just. just decap. It, it's, so, when he comes in, you, you're scared every, every time because he can just bang. Oh, yeah. Double J, right? That's so right. Bojangles said, oh my god, uh, this guy's art is cool. It is cool. Yeah. Now, active ability, Jeff, Pestilence is his fade ability, level one. What is it? So enemy models within six inches, so it's all enemy models within six inches that are already suffering from the curse or poison condition are inflicted with pestilence, full stop. And what pestilence does, you can tell them next. So it's D3 true damage and a minus one penalty to the Mel, Madge, RNG, Agi and Soul Harvest and it does stack. Yeah. So it sounds a lot like poison but it's not because it stacks with poison. Yeah. So the, remember they're already poison, if they're already poison and he does this, yeah. they get the damage and do this. Now. This has got a big negative. They have to be already cursed or poisoned. Yeah. Now, we're big on game balance. Obviously, yeah. Fazil's got a pretty good, interesting kit. Yeah. So his fate ability is conditional. And we've done yeah. it on purpose. Yeah. We've done it on purpose to make sure that we have a balanced character. Yeah. Um, we feel with the right friends, he's yeah. going to go nuts. Because like, his decapitation is a massive it's ability. It's his massive ability. Now, this, this yeah. disability pestilence, you can't shake it, right? It's not like you can shake poison, you can yeah. shake fire. Once, once that's on them, that's on yep. until he activates again. Yep. Right. That's right. It's a good debuff. No, 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 sorry. End, end of the, the... End of the activation. End, end of the activation. So it's a good, it's a good debuff. Um, yeah. And of course, you need... If for sticks to get rid of it, it's a fate. 
Because it's because sticks can get rid of it. Sticks can, but it's a fake because it costs a fake to put it on. Yeah, because well, yeah. sticks get rid yeah. of that. So uh, that's it for there. That's um, just his level one. Now, when he gains a level, uh, level two. This is an interesting vampiric touch. Yep. He's basically allowed to just heal himself a five above his normal damage. Right? Yeah. So this is it's temporary yeah, health. Temporary health. Inverted commas. Yeah. So it's kind of kind of like uh, bulwark. It's the same same thing, but he has to build it up. So if, he leech, if he's leeching. He can actually go above his maximum. But it won't run out like bulwark when he activates it. No, no, that's again, right. Yeah, right? it's temporary health. But that's what it is. It's just allowing yeah. him to heal himself above his five. Yep. So he's leeching, which is vampiric. It's now remember, this guy is as he's three, with no res. Yeah. So he's uh, and he's got sixteen health, and no regen like the minotaurs. So what we wanted to do, we want him to be a maniac in combat. Yeah. So he's gonna be tempted to charge in, yeah. to do damage, leech, heal himself, get him above. Yeah. Like you're really encouraged with this character yeah. to get in and fight. Yeah. And that's what we wanted to do. And um, so, big negative fire, of course, straight yeah. away. It's, yeah, we're it doesn't like it. Doesn't like it yeah. Typical undead, right? Where Itchy Nads is a, un, is a mountain model that is more for maneuverability. Yeah. He's not a combat guy. This guy is a combat yeah. guy. You want him in there, you want to get those J's. You want to yeah. stack the dice in your favour yeah. and just go and decap people, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So it's level three. That's an interesting yeah. one. Life drain, one action and one fate. You know, read this one? Yeah, D3 plus one enemy models within four inches of this model and chosen by the active player suffer two true damage. This model heals for an equal amount of damage caused by life drain. Yeah. So once again, if everyone's in a big, big pile, you can easily catch, if you, get, you can catch four models if you're all D3 plus one. Yeah. And you can get eight health and do, do two, two true damage to each of them. So once again, unlike Rakir or Zonya, where he has ma they have massive fate ability damage, yeah. this guy doesn't do that, but he's generally He damaged. does it in his normal weapon. Yeah. Just a thing on this level three, it, it does not go past his hit points. It's no. not like- It's only, only leech that can give you above your yeah. health. This is just healing damage yeah. is already taken in yeah. his normal damage grid. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't, so don't confuse it with that. Um, um, yeah, so the other things to talk about on the card are just stuff we mentioned. You got mounted and undead rules, and that's basically it, Jeff. And then we've got um, soulless and everything else. Soulless, cursed, and life train. So have a go and play him, people. Is uh, you, when you're facing him, he's pretty scary, but you'll see he's very glass cannony. Yeah. Because he, he, if it's the right circumstance, he can heal himself up. But on the bad circumstance, Aggie threw 16. And it's a little bit tricky uh, sometimes with yeah. him if he kills someone and gets their soul. Because your soul is, it has to go to the nearest friendly model. You don't always, you can't always dictate who that model is. Yeah. And there might not be a model that you want. It's a, um, it's, it can be so you good. Can, you can set it up. You can, if you've got time to set it up, you can make it go to Don Rakel, for example. Yeah, or a big chance. But if you, you can't, it's yeah. not always easy to get the right person. Yeah. 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 But it also means he can go in suicide mode. If, there's, yeah. if they've, you've got two boxes left, yeah. normally you don't want to kill something because you're going to lose a soul. He can go in and it will go to the nearest yeah. model. And it goes both ways. Then he's going to die and they're going to get a bank soul. So yeah, yeah. It's quite, um, but the synergies he's got with the curse and the poison heroes, yeah. you know, Zaffin, Rikir, yeah. um, Akul, yeah, yeah, yeah. all those Hexar, I think Hexar. But the fact yeah. he's cursed means <laughs> Nephany and Victor, it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty cool. So you got to remember with the curse, it's quite a big thing. He can't contest the shrines for you anymore, yeah, he right? Can't, yep. he, he's, he does he can't not help add to, to, to get the soul. soul of yeah. course, he does help in um, ganging up and all that, but yeah. it's just contesting. Yeah. It's, it's a bit of a negative when you're like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, he's pretty exciting. So, so. If he says loves the balance mechanics, being low AG and no res feels like it balances out with the insight output. Um, Remember, it's still his point eight, so reserve the right. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, we still got to. I mean, we encourage people um, to to have some play tests, and we know, like any. I mean, people give us uh, Jeff and I get feedback on everything, so <laughs> you uh, feel free. We don't ignore things. We do. If we don't we do respond, you're not game. getting ignored. We put it in a file, but yep. we do get continual uh, feedback. Um, yeah, we do good, listen to everything good. people say. Um, yeah. We patch the game every three months. So that's going to happen as well. Yeah. Um, so. That's Lord Fazil. That's Lord Fazil, guys. So Shane L. Cook did the illustration. Shane's done the bulk, the vast majority of our illustrations. Um, yeah. And he did a great job again. He did itchy as well, so it worked out really well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so is there anything else, guys? We're pretty much pretty much ready to wrap up. Um, that's about it, Jeff, I think. That's a pretty long show, though. Yeah, it? it was. It was good. So we're going to put this up. Um, I'll put this on YouTube. We will do an article with Fazil, a bit of the background, and he's rules and the illustration on our website and all the social media stuff yep. we're doing. Um, that's basically it. So we're pretty cool. So the sculpt on our radar, the sculpt for Itchy will be revealed soon. Um, and that then basically we'll start manufacturing him. It's looking quite good too. It's looking good, yeah. So 
the next thing that we're going to produce and reveal is the new map. So just to give you the chronological order, the 5v5 neoprene was the first one we did. Yep. With the 3 versus 3 we did the fixed terrain. The new 5 versus 5 is going to have fixed terrain. Yeah. And it's going to be an awesome theme. Um, yeah, got some really exciting things and some, on the map. And there's some new features as well. You know, like we've got shrines and things like that. There's some new things. There's some new things getting added yeah. to the game it's with the new the map, yeah. which are really cool. Like, super fun to play. Yeah. Um, now that we're so comfortable, it's like the gl glove. We're very comfortable with the game rules now and the mechanics. We can start to push the agenda with yeah. cool shit, and that's Enjoy. what we're going to be doing. So that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so is there any last questions before we wrap it up? The other Spencer, itches, oh, Cheddar Cave and got home in time to see awesome art. Uh, he'll be strong, but not super survivable. I'm so excited. He does awesome work. Cool. Uh, so everyone sounds pretty happy. <laughs> Cheddar Caveman, this is the sweetest thing until the Griffin Rider. He was telling me the Griffin Rider. He's a is that an elf on a Griffin? What, what, what are you thinking? Jaden said What's Dragon it? Monster. Yeah, elf, yeah, yeah. Well, elf has to be on a... And then Dragon Monster, you mean? The guy on the... They want to do a Dragon Monster. Well, we can't... It's going to be hard to do a Monitor mounted because... So, BB said... We'll need like a... <laughs> sweet glass cannon, undead horse rocket. Um, like for Falstad from Hots. Oh, that's what he wants. Falstad is a dwarf Griffin Rider. In Warcraft, the yeah. dwarf Rider. I know Falstad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the elf will be on a dragon, surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the monitor, what's the monitor going to be on? We need to just. can't ride. We're not doing cavalry monitors. It has to be like a 100 millimeter base. You heard it here first. <laughs> All right, excellent. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. We had pretty much double or triple what we normally have, so good viewers. It was excellent. We're going to try to do, we're going to try to do one stream a week in US time, at least maybe every two weeks, uh, just to spread the love. We will get around to UK time at some stage. We'll yeah. do one there as well. Uh, but yeah, it's difficult because we both work. We sort of managed to manage it when we can. Yeah. But we'll see what we can do. And a lot of Americans said seems to be events and groups popping up everywhere. Yeah, right. Bro. If you want to uh, let us know, we can even give your event a plug. Oh, of course, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, the any support, merit. like any support, like yeah. get in contact with us if you're running events because we want to try to help you as much as we can. Yeah, and suggest uh, ideas of what to use uh, yeah. for maps and things like that. So do orcs ride raptors? We haven't revealed what orcs ride in our universe yet. Um, Dwarf Defender on a Griffin, that'd be pretty cool. That'd uh, be awesome. Uh, elf or Human on a Griffin, Cheddar once. Yeah. yeah. Put the orders in, boys. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right, cool. Thank you very much, everyone, again. Uh, it's been great. Uh, we will, yeah, speak to you all soon. We're available. Get on our Discord channel. We've got about 80 people now. Yes. It's just it's, an awesome remember community. Remember it was like five or, five yeah, or six so people. Good. Now it's just uh, talking war Facebook bands. Facebook group, yeah. player Judgmental is awesome. Um, I'll be doing a podcast with Colin, I think, tomorrow night which is going to be really cool. Uh, and yeah, we'll be going to KenCon next week. Yeah. Australian convention. Uh, yeah, oh, Vassal's available as well. People want to put Vassal. So we'll get to the seal card on, on Vassal as well with his art. Yep. So you can start playing him. Itchy's already on there. Give us yeah. feedback and we'll see how we go. All right, guys. Thank Have you very fun. much. Good Cheers evening. Everyone. Good night. Bye.